here I have open uh, a session of ANSYS. Here is my model. You can see that it is a static structural model. I can pull up different types of models here. You see here is a transient analysis model. I will just drag and drop it if I want to perform another analysis, basically. This is how it works. And then I would go and open those boxes one by one. So the engineering data is related to the materials. This is the geometry where you import or build the geometry. The model setup and solution result review and so on that is related to the mechanical window that I will show uh, later on. And then you can take different kinds of those analysis boxes and eventually connect them together. So if I double click here in the model, I will have access to all those things. Basically, whatever is, I will open the mechanical window, which is this one. So this is, you can see the geometry actually in the main branch. You have, of course, different tabs which are uh, available. Uh, and you have here this outline tree, which is somehow uh, how you build your model. Basically. So you can come here, you know, the different steps, each step is recorded in this tree regarding the building of your model. So you can open the geometry here and check your parts, let's say one by one. So if you have the upper flange defined, it, the lower flange defined, it. you have a gasket, where is it? It is here in the middle, you can see it, it gets highlighted and you have a bolted assembly, which is there. You can, I can open it, you see the bolt is divided again in three different volumes. I have the shank, I will just right click and hide this body to see it better. I have the shank, I have the head and the nut. A kind of simplified geometry. So this is imported or can be also, actually it can be also uh, defined in, in the ANSYS uh, geometric models directly, uh, space claim or design model. Okay, so you have also the materials defined here you can let's say uh, import them from here but you can control them and uh, modify them mainly from here so that this is the engineering data this is where the materials are these two materials are defined in the model so you have the structural steel which is the standard the one used in ANSYS the basic steel you have all the material properties the density here Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, that's what you need for an elastic analysis. Here is defined also the, the, the fatigue curve and so on, but we will not use it here. That is defined by default. And then you have this gasket material, which is defined here. And I have defined it using, you see here, you have plenty of different boxes which represent, let's say, uh, material loads. So for the mat, for the gasket, I have taken this gasket model. And then you can see this kind of curve, which is defined here. So first the compression curve, okay? And then what we call the linear unloading curves. So this is what makes this kind of analysis complex because we are here in a highly nonlinear uh, phenomenon. So basically what happens with the gasket, you see here, this is the pressure applied on the gasket and this is the closure rate in, 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 in meters or millimeters or whatever. Uh, distance. So when you load your gasket slowly, slowly, you see you're having more and more uh, deflection, which means more and more closure. If you continue, you continue. Let's suppose that you would stop here and then remove the pressure. So the curve will not come back by this way. It will go by this way. That is the unloading curve, which the gasket will follow which means that you will have this kind of remaining gap, which is related to a permanent deformation. So your, your gasket is getting compressed. It was compressed by this much and it will not return to uh, its initial position. So this is kind of uh, irreversible deformation. If you reload your gasket from this point, you will follow this curve again, loading, 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 and coming back to the main curve and continue. If you unload it here, you will come back through this way. So you will have all this gap, or let's say all this permanent deformation, which is there. 
So this is the concept of the, of the gaskets, and this is called actually the, the, the linear unloading curve, which the which the gasket provider should 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 give you. But you can apply it in in ANSYS, and that is somehow what is complexifying the the the, the analysis. And then you can see here, okay, those both materials. So each, I see the assignment. So material is assigned through those boxes here. All the materials are with the structural steel, except the gasket itself, which is with the material assignment called the gasket, which I have just shown right now. And I will show again all the bodies. And then you go to, Ah, yes, the okay, of course, you may have different coordinate systems uh, defined and so on. The connections is something important. So the connections or the contacts here we have four different contacts. The contact is what you need to define between two pieces that you expect that will be in contact during the, the, the analysis. Okay, uh, so you have your contact between you see the upper face of the flame of the, of the gasket and the flange. This is the global view. This is these two views show you the both surfaces in more details. Upper surface of the gasket, lower surface of the flange. This contact is the same thing, but on the other side of the gasket. Here you need to have a contact. So this contact is kind of non-penetration condition that we are providing there. And also I have contacts defined here for the bolting between the bolt head, the bottom of the bolt head and this surface and on the other side as well the same thing. If you don't define those contexts, the, the bodies will interpenetrate and answers will see nothing. So you need to define those contexts. Okay, the mesh itself, this is the generation of the computational grid. So all that is prepared, I have mentioned already and so on. Uh, so this is the discretization, how you cut your, let's say you slice your model in small elements on which the calculation will be performed. So uh, very important, this is not a good mesh, okay? <laughs> this is just for the demonstration. Uh, if I ever I need to rerun the model during the demo, it will run quickly. But this would not be a right mesh to be used uh, if you need accurate results for, for, for the engineering life, let's say. Maybe you would more like to have this kind of structured mesh and more refined mesh. So this is very important. Don't say that I have told you that <laughs> this mesh is, an, is a good one. This one is just for demonstration. And you have plenty of, of different uh, options uh, which allow you basically to get that mesh. And then you come here into the static structure of branch where you would define the loadings and boundary conditions. Basically. So here the boundary conditions, uh, I have set up those surfaces, these ones and those ones as frictionless surfaces. This is to account for the, uh, for the symmetry. Basically the surface cannot move in the perpendicular direction, which accounts for a kind of symmetry. It's equivalent to a symmetry condition. I have applied the pressure here on the internal surfaces and a pouring force here on the upper face here. And also an important thing, the bolt itself. It's the bolt preload, which is defined like this on the bolt shank. And then you have the loading value, the preload, which is provided by this value. And then in the following steps of the analysis, you just lock this bolt, it doesn't move anymore. And you apply the other loads, the pressure and the force. This is it. Then when you have defined all of that, you run the analysis and you review the result. I will just show all the bodies. So basically, this kind of definitions, when you go on each branch, you would have some features which become accessible. Like here for the mesh, you have those different options that you can take for the methods, for the meshing methods, for the sizing, uh, for the mapped meshing and so on. Uh, on this structural static 
analysis, you would have all the loadings and boundary conditions you can see available. Acceleration, uh, earth gravity, pressures, hydrostatic pressures, forces, both retention is there, thermal loadings, and so on, as well as the uh, boundary conditions. So in order to hold the time, uh, we have started a bit later, so I'll just take a few more minutes, but let's say when this is set up, you run the analysis and you get the results of your model. So here is an example of the deformation. You can check which, uh, which parts are more deformed. You can also animate the results. For example, you can see here an animation. So you see the preloading of the boat at the first step and then some kind of deformation here coming after the pressure and force is applied. Uh, it, it is possible also to have some more results. Say. The formation scale is not there. Anyway. Okay. Uh, yes, I can have some more deformation here. Let's say 15, 20. To see, to scale the deformation visually, basically, and see how the structure deforms. This somehow speaks to, 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 to the engineer in order to observe how it behaves. You can get the stresses here, you see, on the structure. You can go and review the value, of course, of the maximum stress, where it is, how much is that, is that fine with respect to the standard, and so on, with respect to the allowable uh, stresses. And you have plenty, actually, of different uh, post-processing values. The deformations, which can be total or bi-direction, let's say, in x, y, and z direction. Different types of strains, different types of stresses, the equivalent von Mises, or principal stresses, risk and intensity stress, shear stresses, and so on. Uh, and also different types of probes and contact tools and fatigue tools, if you are using uh, that. Here in the contact tool, the last thing that I would show, which is important is, I mean, I have inserted here the contact tool, which I have applied to the contact, which defines uh, which is defined between the gasket and the flange, okay? And by doing this, I'm able to see the contact stages here. You see ANSYS provides me those images and those color codes where what is uh, yellow is told in near contact. So basically it's not in contact. What is orange is sliding and what is, let's say red is, is sticking. So basically, all those red surfaces and even the orange ones are in contact between them, uh, which means that you can see I will have no leak uh, with this preload that I have applied here. Basically, all those parts here are in red color. They are in sticked contact. This is an important uh, thing. And if ever you have uh, a doubt, you can also review the contact pressures which are provided on the same contact. And then obviously, wherever you have zero pressure, then you don't have contact. Uh, so let's say on those blue parts or more or less, and whatever is here, you have already the contact and you can review the pressure and estimate whether that is enough or not to, to hold the, the fluid. So this is how, uh, how it would work. Uh, yes, I think, I have gone through the most important, uh, most important uh, things related to this analysis.